Welcome or welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna talk about five things I would not go on a cruise without. So five cruise essentials. And then at the end we'll put a couple of bonus things that are nice to have. I always take them, but you don't necessarily need them. So stay tuned for that. I am a travel agent who specializes in Disney Universal and cruise adventures, so I can help you with all of the planning with that at no extra cost to you. And I give you tips and tricks like this. So let's just get right into it, things that we, that I will always, always bring with me on a trip. If you'd like to see some of our trips, you can click the join button down there and become a member of our channel for a small fee and you'll see um, footage of all of our trips that we take, not just our packing videos and things like that. So let's get going. Oh, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe because it lets me bring you more videos just like this. As always, I'll have links down below to all of this stuff so that you can find it or something similar. So let's get started. So the first thing that I'm gonna bring with me is sunscreen. Now I have to show you a screenshot because I am out of this particular kind that I like, but any kind of sunscreen that you like will do. And the reason is even if you're on an Alaskan cruise, there can be sunshine. Um, and the reason that you want to remember to bring sunscreen is you can buy it on the ship or you can buy it in port, but you're going to pay a lot more for it. And sunscreen is very, very important. We don't wanna forget our sunscreen. Even if you don't get seasick, you're gonna want some kind of seasickness solution with you, just in case. If, even if you've been on a cruise before and you're like, I didn't get seasick, you could have really rough waters. You may be able to go down to medical and get something, but you may not. And if you buy it on the ship, it's gonna cost you a lot. These take up very little room and you're covered that way. So the first thing I bring is boning. You can bring Dramamine if you want, but I don't particularly like that. If you think you might get seasick, a good idea is to take this 24 hours before you get on the cruise ship um, because it does take a little while to kick in. So these are great. I particularly like boning because it doesn't make me drowsy and you don't have to take it as often. Um, and then they do sell acupressure bands, all kinds of different ones, but most of them you'll, that you'll see look like the sporty like 80s sweatband ones and I don't like that look. If you do, that's fine. But I found these and I really like them. They just look like little elastic bracelets, but as long as you put them in the right spot, they're gonna help. They also help me with vertigo. So I've had vertigo a couple of different times and wearing these definitely helps me out. So they're called Rooted and I'll link everything down below. I think you get four in a pack. The next thing you're gonna wanna bring is over-the-counter medications. So obviously you're gonna wanna bring your prescription medications, but you're gonna wanna bring a stash of different over-the-counter medications, and you're gonna wanna bring first aid. If you wanna see everything that I have packed in this little Dollar Tree pencil case for a cruise ship, I have a video on that. I'll link it down below, and you can get a deep dive into what's into this. You're just gonna wanna bring small amounts of over-the-counter medications that you think you might need, just in case, just as backup, because you may be able to get them on the cruise ship, you may not, but also you're going to pay a ton for ibuprofen if you need ibuprofen and you just, you don't wanna do that. Just bring it with. And then here's first aid. So this thing, let me talk to you about this thing. This is really cool. So I asked this company, Keep Going, if they would send me this to review and they gladly sent it over to me and I'm so excited they did because I get to show it to you. So this is a little personal first aid kit. It has 130 pieces in it and it's really well organized. I chose this pattern. It comes in all kinds of different patterns and colors, but I chose this one because it is very obvious what is inside this. If someone besides me is looking for first aid, so one of my family members or someone else, they know that's what this is. It's clear, right? Okay, so let's get into it. First, it has this really nice little carry handle to make it like grab and go kind of thing. Um, I would even take this on excursions or put this in my Disney or Universal Parks bag. Enough talking, let's get into it. So it opens up like this and you have all your different supplies that you need here and I'll go through it really quickly. So in this section here, all the zippers are really nice too and easy. In this section here, so you have a sewing kit, tick remover, some decent scissors. I tried these out, they actually work. A lot of times you'll get 
scissors in a medical kit and they are trash, basically. Safety pins, which are good for just about everything. Um, you have some Q-tips. These are splinter removers. A really nice pair of tweezers, that's important. And then I'm not really sure what the tongue depressor is for, but I could look. in the included first aid guide that goes in there and it would probably tell me. I guess you could use it for finger splints or something like that. Um, back here. So that's what's in here. Then in here we have really nice fabric band-aids. I love a good fabric bandage. Some individual packages of triple antibiotics. So think like Neosporin. These are great because you're not opening a whole thing and they're small, right? And you can bring them with you. Also, this company offers refill kits too, which I find great because if you use these things, you don't wanna to have to buy a whole nother kit just to restock. Then back here, we have non-sting cleansing wipes. So those are great if you have little kids and they don't, you know, alcohol stings when you try to clean something, right? Otherwise, then we have sting relief pads. So things like if you get a bug bite, this will kind of numb it. Down in there is alcohol prep pads more triple antibiotic, this is great, lip balm, some hydrocortisone cream for, this is anti-itch kind of thing, more band-aids, but more little kid kind of version of band-aids in different sizes. Over here you have burn gel, looks like that, with a little lidocaine so it just takes the pain out. And then digging back into here, this is for your bigger bummers, right? A couple of butterfly closures, one of those um, fabric bandages like for your knuckles or your fingertips. There's another one of those. And then nonstick gauze pads. So if you really are racking yourself up, you can use that. And then in this pocket over here, we have even more things. So we have waterproof bandages. These are great for blisters, that type of thing, or if you're out somewhere and you need a waterproof bandage, I think there's two in here. Yep. Big, like if you scrape your knee kind of fabric bandage. This is just an extra little bag to put whatever you need in. I'll talk about that in a minute. Then you have, these can tell body temperatures, so you can tell if you have a fever or if you're getting overheated. Here's another extra little bag. Moleskin, which is just wonderful for blisters. I like that everything is labeled too, so if you run out of something, you know what was supposed to go in here. Stickers, because, you know, stickers are great not only as a distraction, but, you know, for bravery. And you can also just hand a kid some stickers and they're pretty happy. Then back here we have extra medical tape. And these are great nosebleed plugs. So if you've ever been somewhere and your kid gets a nosebleed, these are really nice to have. Um, and then there's extra space in here too. So if I was going to the parks or if I was going to a, on an excursion, a cruise excursion, I would throw this in my excursion bag or my park bag. And then I would also take this space over here to throw a couple of different medicines in there. So I would throw, let's see. I would throw ibuprofen for sure. I would throw in some sort of child's pain reliever and probably some allergy medication. And I would throw in some simethicone, some like anti-gas drops and maybe an anti-diarrheal depending on how, where it was gonna be and how long it was gonna be out. And that would all, if, it, if you flat packed it, like I've taught you how to do, it would all fit in there really, really easily. So highly recommend this. It's a really comprehensive kit. A lot of kits you get are just 50,000 Band-Aids and a crappy pair of tweezers. This is actually a really, really good kit. A small family owned business and I highly recommend the Keep Going kits. I'll have a link down below. My link will get you an amount off. I'll put it right down here on the screen, the amount off that you get. Or you can also order them off of Amazon if you prefer to do it that way too. So again, all the links are below. These Keep Going Go kits are great. You've seen me say this before. If you're going on a cruise ship, bring some poopery. This is just a little bottle. I know I have a bigger bottle somewhere too. This one is carry-on compliant. Obviously it's very small. I have a bigger bottle for actually in our cruise ship bathroom. And all you do with poopery is before you go poo, 
you spray a couple of spritzes into the toilet and it takes the smell away and your whole cabin then doesn't smell like somebody's um, poop. So, you know, this is a great one to have. If you are sharing a cabin with anyone, out of courtesy, bring some poopery. But lastly, I have these. If you are in a cruise cabin, you know that most of the time there are not a lot of outlets and most people have a lot of things they have to plug in. So I bring these two. They have, I like that the prongs on them are foldable. This one just has USB-A plugins. This one has both USB-A and USB-C, which is really, really nice. They're very lightweight. They're very small. Like I said, these are foldable so they don't get bent or they don't poke through anything. These do not specifically say that they are cruise compliant, but I have taken this one on a cruise ship and it didn't get taken away from me. If you're concerned about that, I'll put something down below that is cruise compliant. What other things would I bring that are nice to have, but not absolutely necessary? So a pop-up hamper is really, really nice for keeping all of your laundry and things contained while you're on a cruise ship. Magnets, I'll link the ones that we use down below. Magnetic hooks are great because you can make use of the vertical space. Cruise cabins, most of them have metal walls and metal doors, so you can hang all kinds of things from them. And lastly, I would bring some kind of reusable coffee cup or water bottle. I bring both actually, a coffee cup and a reusable water bottle. It's nice to walk around the ship with a nice warm cup of coffee or cocoa or tea. And then reusable water bottles are great because you can put soda in them, you can put water in them, you can take them on excursions. And if you get the insulated ones, everything stays nice and cool. Uh, and then of course I would bring some kind of sponge or something to wash that out. That's all I have for you today. I hope this was helpful. I hope you travel well and I hope you travel often and thanks for watching.